Hello everyone, my name is Adelaida and uh, I'm happy to share in these moments, difficult moments that we are living, some small short practice, only 30 minutes uh, sequence for hip openings, for the legs and especially for release our mind, to calm our mind down that are things that we need a lot to work in this moment to keep strong uh, physically but mentally as well. Thank you for subscribe on our channel and if you like it you can also like the video so we keep sharing with more people and helping to support each, each other in this moment. We will start, we will work with some uh, props that already, if you don't have these ones, you can you use your imagination on your house and something close. Here I have three blankets, but also you can use some towers, thick towers, or some cushions but they are, that they are firm. A chair, a normal chair is okay and if you have a strap, a yoga strap, that's okay or if not some rope, something that can help you as well. If you have two bricks also could help otherwise you can put other two cushions to support. We are going to start with Sukta Bhagavanasana. Like you already know we are going to prepare some support for the back. We, if you have some blankets, we fold it in such a way that will be a support for our back. See that when you fold it, they are even. So with two blankets or some long towers, would help to have a support for the upper back and here I have an extra blanket for the head but also a cushion could help. Now we are going to use the chair and if you have a belt we can use the belt otherwise we can put the feet against the wall as well to don't slide the feet. Just observe how I'm going to put the belt We open quite big, so we go with the belt inside where is the sacrum. Not on the lower back, see that I'm going to place on the sacrum. And always the part where I'm going to adjust should have this direction. So when I'm going to lie down, I can adjust the last adjustments. So, the heels will be as closer that you can towards the pubis. That will depend for you, your flexibility. And the bricks or two cushions or whatever is an extra support that if you feel that the groins are too stiff, you can put it. When you're going to lie down, see that you're going to place the hands and you're on the center. The lower back is not supported, it's on the air. And here, rounding, you find the height for your head that is touching the shoulders. And here is where you're going to do the final adjustments. That you're going to lift the pelvis and move the buttocks towards the feet and you adjust as close as you feel okay that your legs are not sliding towards the feet. Here is where if you feel that the groins are too stiff and you need an extra support, you can put whatever height that you need for your legs. Now, we are going to stay for a few minutes. I have here a timer so I can count better the time. I'm going to show without the support, but you prepare as much you feel okay. 
Make all the adjustments on the beginning until you feel that you are in such a moment that you don't need to keep moving. Close your eyes. Roll your arms in such a way that the shoulders open, open, the shoulder blades go towards the sacrum. And now only start to give time for the breath. Starting first with the exhalation. This was one the first minute. And each exhalation, feel how the belly goes deeper towards the spine. Relaxing the groins. Relaxing the internal organs. Allowing the head to become heavier. And observe as well your eyes, if they can drop deeper down towards the back of the head. Now you're going to make a little bit more active the pose by bringing the arms up and holding one hand to the opposite elbow. If you feel that it's too much for your shoulders, just keep in the other variation. And let you observe when your arms are up how the breath starts to go a little bit more towards the upper chest. And just give permission that the breath start to open sideways and that reach towards the sternum, towards the collarbone. Deep each exhalation. That lifting of the chest keeps rising. And the next minute, just you will change the hold of the hand with the elbow. If you make, make any adjustment. A soft inhalation and exhalation with totally awareness. Keep using the feet to move more and more the sacrum and the buttocks towards the feet. And the knees, just because their own weight start to go closer to the floor. And slowly release first the arms and then bring the legs, the feet towards you, remove the belt and stretch one leg at a time and relax. And just feel the difference, just only these five minutes, how it's changed the awareness, you are more present, your body, on your breath. Feel the spaces that they are opening. Prepare for coming up, so then bend one leg, bend the other, turn to one side, and use the hand that you have above to push and come all the way up. Now we're going to do one forward bend. 
this was a hip opening and also a back bend and we're going to cross simple cross legs sukhasana mm, i show first from this direction that the knees are underneath the feet underneath the knees if your knees are too high and your lower back is round use the height that you need for bringing the pelvis higher mm. If you need more, you put more until you feel that you can lift. You can put one hand on the sacrum, one hand on the belly and see that both sides are lifting even. And now we're going to go forward. And here is where perhaps the chair could help us. We try. For some of you, just you can go forward and make a pillow for your forehead or just a blanket, something like this. For some of you, if you have a brick, perhaps with the brick is enough. Or here is where the chair, I can put a blanket to make it more comfortable. And as well, I found support for my forehead. So keeping the buttock bones, these two bones round the buttocks back, just allow that the upper body comes forward just because gravity. In each exhalation, see if the belly comes go towards the spine. Instead of collapse the belly, See what happens when they collapse the belly, how the lower back starts to strain and opposite. In the exhalation is the opportunity to remember that belly towards the spine and allow the breath to lengthen the spine. In whatever of the variations that you are, Just feel the leg, the hip, how it's opening. And the weight of the forehead dropping down. See that the skin of the forehead is going in. And then you're going to change the growth of the legs. So in whatever variation that you are adopting, just you change the growth of the legs. You move again the buttocks back and the support that you need. Chair, brick, hands, whatever helps you to keep feeling. Now the opposite leg is where I'm feeling the side of the leg that is opening, the hips, back, the weight on the buttocks. And in the lengthening of the spine in each inhalation and increase that opening. So you have to find which is the height that you need to feel that. I'm going to stay 30 seconds more here. And then using the hands, coming all the way up. The next asana will be just simple balakonasana. I will show from here as well the height that you need. One blanket, two blankets, three blankets. That before we would try to go with the heels as closer to the pubis, and now we will try to get long the front and the back body. If again the knees are too high, I can put an extra 
high from my pelvis. So make the adjustments that you need first. If you need more high, just you put more high. If it's too, if you can only reach the heels, the ankles, but the elbows are too on the front and I cannot bend the elbows, here is where you're going to use again whatever rope, strap, but I can now keep working, first feeling both buttock bones, the center of the buttock bones rooting down and allowing that the side body start to get along. From the sacrum, we are coming forward, but the thighs resisting back. I start to make space from the pubis towards the navel, from the navel towards the sternum. But the diaphragm, I don't brush it forward. I keep back, connecting with the back body, trying to get as taller that we can towards the crown of the head. And just relaxing the knees, relaxing the groins. So the knees just, but the arms start to go down. Using the breath to open from inside Trust the side body, trust the back body, trust the front body, and then release. Just stretch one moment the legs. And relax, let go completely. Keep listening your own breath during the inhalation, during the exhalation. The next asana will be Abhubhukha Shwanasana. Here we use the wall. And I will show you from here, the hands will be in this direction. So we can press with the thumb and the index finger against the wall. And the full palm of the hand is on the floor, pressing even, but especially with the thumb and the index finger. But with the wall will be easy because I have something that stop here the movement. I prepare here, I engage first from my hands, my arms, rolling the shoulders, engaging the shoulder blades, and then in the exhalation, starting to lift the pelvis. First with the heels up and with the knees bent, and just go for the maximum, maximum of extension of the spine. Be careful here to don't arch. Now we want to bring the tailbone forward, same movement that before in Bhagavad So the navel go towards the spine. And we want to lift towards the sternum, all the front body. Keeping that extension, we start to stretch the legs, keeping the heels up without rounding. If the legs cannot be stretched, just we keep here. If we can, we start to stretch. Only a few seconds more. Working with the breath. That side opening on the ribs, exhaling belly towards the spine. Bringing the knees towards the floor and resting few breathing Almukha Vidasana. If your 
Buttock bones are not touching the heels. Again, they have a support. We can put the blanket, the tower, whatever. We can have some contact here. And if the head doesn't reach the floor, as well, whatever support that we can rest with the buttocks towards the heels and the whole weight of the head downward. To prepare for coming up, inhale in. And we're going to do now Uttanasana against the wall. We have here as well the chair that some of you perhaps they will need it, perhaps you don't need it. That's up to your possibilities. Always yoga adapts to you, not opposite. We have to see what is good for us. So what we are going to do is that the buttock bones, as again, this time will touch the wall. So that is the first thing. Keeping the legs parallel one to each other, the main thing is that the buttock bones touch the wall. Then, my hands should touch something. If they don't touch the floor, again, we have all the options. We have the bricks, if we have two bricks, or some of you, perhaps the chair. Always we have a chair in house, so we can use the chair. So the main thing first will be that. Just keeping the buttock bones towards the wall, we will try to go as well with the heels at the same time, not only the buttock bones. But if the buttock bones start to go away, I prefer to keep some distance. If we can both, perfect. But the buttock bones are the first. So just now we will try to push the legs, especially the top of the legs, very firmly towards the wall. We can lift a little bit the toes like I'm doing, just to have more weight on the heels. This is with one option. If I don't need any height, I can do it as well with the hands on the floor. But now I'm working very, very feel my legs to keep pressing against the wall, extending the spine. Lengthening, using the quadriceps to lengthen the kneecaps, everything, and especially concentrate on the top of the legs to go as much closer towards the wall. And then I will fold down. This was Ardhatanasana, and here, ideally, we want to have some support. So, again, one option could be mm, that my support could be here. Mm. But I don't relax the legs. I keep the legs pressing towards the wall, but I relax completely my torso. This is one option. If that you feel that it's okay for you, that you're still working the legs, and you keep start feeling that expansion on the upper body, on the spine, just to stay here, don't move. If you feel that for you, you can be more flexible and you can go deeper, you can find another support lower and you can go for, a, for example here, more the crown of the head, touching here. But whatever variation, we keep pressing with the legs firm towards the wall, using the arms to keep the shoulders back, but relaxing the spine.
last lift here. And from coming back to the chair, just you press from the chair and go a little bit away from the wall. And also using the wall, we can go in the inhalation and we can have a small rest in a vertical position. And just feel again, feel your breath, your body, and the state of your mind. Next asana, we will repeat our Mugashwan asana, but this time will be with the heels against the wall. So the same as we done before. With the heels, and you can have some support you have ready. So we got the same strain of the arms that we work, like we were pushing against the wall. First, we take the measure. We can go from Adamuka Virasana and we see, okay, this will be my Adamuka Shwanasana. I calculate how much height that I need for the support. And perhaps with one grip, I see, ah, okay, this is enough. I can rest my head here, but same. If we need more, we put more. Just to find that the head can relax a little bit more. So we remember that sensation, how we were pressing against the wall with the hands, with the index fingers, with the thumb, especially that part. How we can engage the shoulder blades and from there, again, all the way back, backwards, towards the hips. The legs, the same power that before in Uttanasana, like I'm pushing towards the wall. And the belly exhaling in towards the spine and getting longer towards the sternum. Getting along the sides of the waist the sides of the ribs. And pressing, going with the knees back down. Alamukavidasana, if you need any support, just you know what you need. Just relax. Relax the inner organs, the forehead, also the shaw, the throat. And we prepare for coming up to the last standing pose. And we'll be Trasarita Padotanasana. Again, we can do it against the wall. If we don't have any wall, we can do it same. It's not like we need the wall. But if you have a wall, I suggest to use the wall. It's very interesting how having that reference, we can go deeper in the pose. We, now we don't have the teacher that is looking to us and can correct. So we have the wall that doesn't cheat, that 
show us when it's vertically or not the legs. So the same than before the Uttanasana, but this time spreading the legs. This is a little bit shorter for me. Perhaps it's good if you have a longer wall that the heel as well is touching the skirting board. Mm -hmm. But same than before, first you go a little bit away, you place the hands on the floor, on the mat, on the bricks, on the chair, whatever option good for you. And then just keeping the spine long. Mm -hmm. So goes for me, I can do it with the bricks. So when you have your spine long, see if you can go as well. Keeping the back of the bones touching the wall, if I can go as well with the heels. If not, I keep a little bit away. So moving the same action that before in Arvantanasana, but this time as well, putting a little bit more emphasis on the inside of the legs. From the inner heels, rising the groins. And careful to don't arch here the lower back. Again, that action that we want to make the belly comes in and up. Extending here maximum. So when you get that extension, see which variation is good for you. I want you to stay a little bit longer. So one option would be that here I can have a support for my forehead. If you need to get it closer, but not relaxing here. As much as we can, we keep working that inside, that groins that are in each inhalation, taller and taller. And then spreading the buttocks, the heels the buttock bones towards the heels. So this could be one option. If you are more flexible and you want to get another variation, perhaps here, I can have a support here perhaps, or perhaps just a blanket, or don't support, you know which variation could fit for you. And I they keep working my inner legs especially, And I feel the wall. How much I'm pressing from the front of the thighs towards the back of the thighs. Rolling the inner groins towards the wall, but also up towards the ceiling. And then for coming back, walking the hands, going a little bit away from the wall with your heels, hands on the hips, inhaling, coming up, and closing. Now everyone, we will use the chair. And we sit on. This is for every sitting pose, not only for yoga, every time. We sit down in a chair, we are driving. How if we found the weight on the buttock bones on the center, how the, all the spine, the upper body, it's like lifting without effort. So this is a good way to learn and to apply them during the daily life. 
So we're going to cross one leg. See that this, perhaps for some of you, this is what is going to happen, no problem. And perhaps this is the maximum that you can have here. So if you feel that just only crossing one leg like this is too much, perhaps only having some support underneath here, you start to feel a lot of the pyramidal periform muscle that is lengthening and you work here mm -hmm. just to don't collapse just to keep that lengthening like we done in Balakonasana mm -hmm. the same that both sides of the front and back body getting long and I use my hands as well to help that lifting especially on the side body so for some of you perhaps this is too much and that you're working there For some of you, just you feel like here is okay, so you can start to go with your back long and start to go forward without going with the knee in, keeping that, in this case, the left knee parallel and just here. You keep breathing and moving that right hip back, using the feet to move the way backwards. And then also, you can relax forward. Preparing for coming up. And exhaling, releasing. I'll show the other side. I turn the chair that is easy to see. We are with the time. I think. Okay. So, whatever, perhaps here mm, is what you can. So, you rise a little bit here and you will feel it. Just careful to don't feel on the knees. Not that here we want to feel. Mm. So for some of you, just this will be more than enough. If this is okay, you keep going, 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 until also you can relax here, but it's not like I'm doing nothing. I keep using my right feet in this case to move the left hip back. Inhaling, coming up, and exhaling, releasing. We're going to go now for simple twist. So you got in one side of the chair, if you have this kind of chair, or not just on the front, whatever. You will try to only be aware of one thing. I put here the brick, it's not necessary. But when I'm going to twist, I don't want this. I want to keep steady here. We can put a grip. It's not necessary. Just as a reminder that this hip, I don't want to move. I want to lengthen first, maximum, side body, rolling the shoulders and exhaling, starting to twist. See that the shoulder blade start to get forward not the shoulder, no? from the back, the shoulder blade. Inhaling, lengthening, exhaling, twisting. Inhaling, lengthening the navel, exhaling, twisting and going deeper towards the spine. And going one more breath to the maximum of lengthening towards the crown of the head. Exhaling, releasing. 
and then the other side. I will show from the back so also you can see the movement. Or you don't have to see, just you can listen to instructions and see inside your inner body. Inhaling, exhaling. Reminding now the left hip to keep back. One hip to the each other, hugging the center, and from there, lengthening, and that shoulder blade going forward, the shoulders back, moving the chest, moving the back ribs. One extra breath, going to the maximum of lengthening towards the crown of the head. And then exhaling back to center. And we do one relaxing Uttanasana from here, just finding that the torso is completely relaxed, the head is completely relaxed. and pushing from the feet to come on the way up. Last asana, we Viparitakarani with the chair. If you need a support for your head, you can put it. If you need to get warmer, you get warmer. The chair, where is the chair? Where you feel that helps to sink completely the pelvis down. That is flat. In such a way, you can open, spread a little bit the legs. That you feel that both legs, those femur bones are joining on the ground, on the hip joints. If you have something heavy, you can put it over the belly. If you don't have Nothing to put over, it doesn't matter, just you feel how the belly comes up twice in the inhalation and drops in the exhalation. And see if you can make each exhalation a little bit longer. Just connect with the feeling of the weight or the head is heavy, or the pelvis is heavy. And the whole body is relaxing deeply, deeper and deeper. Stay a little bit longer here in Rotavita Karani. I'm going to come out, but you stay a little bit longer.
start to go deeper also on the relaxation of the face, the whole face, the skin, the muscles, the inside of the mouth, the shawl, the tongue, the throat. And this will be your Shavasana. So just for the last seconds, doing nothing special. Just being present, just being aware how it's lying down the body. How the breath comes in and out. I'm starting to prepare for coming back as you can bend the legs towards the chest still here you make a nice massage on the pelvis and you prepare for right rolling to one side again rounding the back keeping the eyes closed and opening the eyes now and looking towards the floor in the next inhalation using the hand that we have above coming back to sitting and this practice is over and um, hope that you enjoy that it helps to increase your health to your health emotionally physically and to use this time like an opportunity that perhaps before you didn't have to look inward Thank you again for, if you can subscribe to our channel, um, if you like it, just put like on our video. Um, that's it, that is all. Namaste.